management can be a challenge for small and large farm operations. Excess manure can cause health, odor, and water quality problems if not properly handled. One option is to dispose of waste daily by loading in a spreader and applying it to cropland, hayland, or pasture. This is time consuming and also has to be done regardless of the soil moisture, weather conditions, or time of year. The alternative to daily spreading is to stockpile or store the manure, eventually to be spread or hauled away and utilized elsewhere. Even though the number of livestock on your farm may not be large, eventually the stockpiling of manure may pose a problem if proper planning and management is not done. Regardless of the type or size of manure storage, there are a few basic principles to follow. Keep the water clean. Rooftop or surface runoff should be diverted away from stored manure. Gutters and downspouts are often the best way to collect and convey rooftop runoff to an underground outlet pipe. Treat the dirty water. Any rainfall landing on the manure pile or the livestock areas should drain to a treatment area such as a vegetated filter strip. Grasses absorb and reduce many of the pollutants in the runoff. Store the manure out of a flood hazard area. Flood waters can transport manure downstream and cause extensive water quality problems. Avoid steep slopes when siting your storage location. The steeper the slope, the harder it is to manage the storage area and the greater potential for site runoff. Spread the manure following a nutrient management plan that establishes rate per acre to match the nutrient needs available to the crop. Storage can be simple or complex. The choice depends on a number of factors. The first thing to decide is the location. Make sure it's convenient to the animal housing. The storage must be located well outside of any stream floodplain. Odor management is another consideration when siting a storage facility. Consider wind direction as it relates to dwellings. Finally, let's consider aesthetics. If possible, keep the facility out of view of neighbors and passers-by. Sometimes a screen of trees can help and may also help to reduce odor problems. The size of a storage facility depends on the number of animals present, the length of storage, and how much manure you will have to spread. A capacity for six months is ideal, but at least three months of storage space is recommended. Stockpiling is simply taking the manure and bedding and moving it to a convenient location. This primitive method can be acceptable for a farm with just a few animals. However, the spot must be compacted and sealed so that the rainfall cannot leach pollutants into the soil or groundwater. Packed gravel or stone dust can provide an adequate base or pad. The area approaching the pad needs to be firm to prevent rutting. A stockpile can be covered with a plastic tarp to reduce odors, annoying flies, and leaching. Dry stack is probably the most common and practical choice for the small livestock operation. A dry stack facility has three walls to contain the manure. The best ones have a poured concrete floor, slightly sloped for drainage, and the drainage runs to an adjacent vegetative filter strip. The walls of a dry stack facility will be a minimum of four feet high. The walls must be strong since the manure will be exerting outward pressure as manure is removed. The walls can be poured concrete, cinder block, horizontal or vertical timbers. Secure anchoring below the frost line is critical. The treatment of raw manure through composting is gaining in popularity. The finished compost is crumbly, low in odor and resembles topsoil and can therefore provide a marketable product. Composting reduces the amount of available nutrients, kills pathogens, reduces odors, and decreases volume. However, it requires management. A pile of manure left alone is not composting, it's just decomposing, which is very different. Composting requires a balance of nitrogen, carbon, oxygen, and water. When things run properly, the center of the pile reaches 140 degrees, killing pathogens and rendering a relatively stable product. An untended decomposing pile has a nearly anaerobic core, producing objectionable odors. Composting requires taking the pile's temperature and turning of the pile regularly to mix and aerate. Sometimes it will need water, other times it will require protection from rain to avoid saturation. There are many ways to set up the composting pile. It could be several long windrows four to six feet high on compacted ground, gravel, or concrete, or there may be several small dry stack bays connected together side by side. The manure is moved from one bay to the next, then mixed and aerated in the process. Manure and bedding, when properly mixed, can be transformed into compost in as little as six weeks. Liquid storage is used by many larger dairy or swine farms. 
The waste is diluted with stall wash water and pumped to a lagoon or holding location. Then the liquid effluent and solids are pumped into an injector tank and spread in the field as a slurry, sprayed on the surface, or injected into the soil. This type of storage and management system is usually the most complex and expensive. Sometimes the best solution is simply to have a dumpster or portable holding structure to store the manure. Eventually, it can be used as needed by a commercial composter or farmer. If the amount of manure being generated daily is minimal, even a small manure spreader can serve as storage. When full, spread the waste on cropland according to a nutrient management plan. Caution though, if applying to pasture land, it's important to spread the manure about four weeks before a grazing cycle. Vegetative filter strip. It's crucial to have a vegetative filter strip to treat the water coming from a manure pile or concentrated livestock area. The combination of biological processes in the topsoil greatly reduces pollution potential of manure runoff. The filter should be established as a vigorous stand of grasses adapted to local conditions. Animals should be excluded. It can be cut for hay if desired. On a flatter slope, the strip should be a minimum of 30 feet wide, wider if the slope is steeper. In closing, livestock manure that is not spread daily should be stored on an impervious surface, away from fresh water that could be contaminated. All storage locations, short or long term, should drain into a vegetative filter strip. Farmers should value manure for crop and pasture production and follow a nutrient management plan for disposal of livestock waste.